Who is Don Beach? He's the granddaddy tiki. The idea that you'd mix rum and fruit juice and put a flower in it all comes down to Don. Don Beach is, you know, known as like the founder of Tiki. Don Beach is the creator. He started it all. He was the godfather. Part of the tiny mustache movement. Who is Don Beach? I don't have the slightest idea. He was playing a character. He crafted his own mythology. He was born Ernest Gant, but he died Don Beach. He wore the same thing every single day. Oh, he's a character. He's an impresario. He's associating with Hollywood people. Got some tall tales. He's got an unusual background. There's a little mystery. There's a little intrigue. Bootlegging. He opened the day after Prohibition was lifted. There was no way in December 5th, 1933, when he opened his Beachcomber Cafe, that he had all these recipes down, was ready to give you a menu. There's no way. He was a genius at hosting people and making them feel at home. And the guy knew how to throw a great party. It was kind of like a Playboy Club before the Playboy Club started. He didn't go to Donna Beachcombers for the food. What he did completely revolutionized the industry. You take an ubiquitous cocktail template. In this case, I'm talking about the planter's punch. And then amplify it. Brilliant. He had imitators almost immediately. There were 150 copycats across the U.S. all the way to the East Coast serving his drinks. He started creating secrecy in the recipes. Don had mix number one, mix number two. So nobody knew exactly what those mixes were. Even his bartenders didn't know what was in there. It almost sounds like something Sonny would do because it was almost too smart for him. We're, we're going to give him credit for it. People call Don the godfather of Tiki, but they don't call him the godfather of business. Cora Sun, she became the promoter and the owner of the Beachcomber name. She came in and took over. First thing she did is started cleaning it, got a real cash register, became a business. Creative people need somebody like that. I don't think it would have been a successful business without my mother. They started the paperwork for the Beachcombers in Chicago. One would think you would just go to a bank and go, hey, based on my other business, I need to borrow some money. So she went right to the mob and said, I would like to borrow $30,000. Now it's interesting. They said, Don, this is what's going to happen and you're going to like it. I had a bodyguard from that moment on until I was 21. And this all revolves around a tiki bar. That's what's nuts, like what? In those few months, in that, that year, it just, it's just gone. Don's legacy is everywhere. For the most part, a lot of our cocktails are all <laughs> Donna Beachcomber cocktails. He turned the cocktail culture on its head, but he also gave us the blueprint. And now you have Tiki dovetailing with the craft cocktail renaissance. A new greatest generation of people came along and said, wow, look at all this exotica Tiki stuff. It is even more than just the tropical bar. It's the whole concept of escapism. He created these little pockets of paradise, at least an imagined fake paradise all around the country. But he also, I think, had a legitimate desire for things to not be exploited, to not be made overly cheesy. He was a stickler for detail and for authenticity. He thought of drinks in a way that nobody had. Put it like right in the middle of your chest there. Are you shaving up? Yes. 